In January 1988, a 12-year-old girl, Stephanie Crow, was killed in her own bedroom in the middle of the night. Her brother, Michael Crow, was interrogated by the police. They believed he had killed his sister. Just start talking. He was interrogated and eventually admitted to the crime. I just, it's like I have this overwhelming feeling that I killed her, but... Okay, let's, let's reason, hear, let me hear about it. Let me I don't know about. why I, I feel that way. Let me hear about it. All I know is, is for some reason I, I can tell I killed her. He was charged with Stephanie Crow's murder. Problem was, the confession was false. There has to be an explanation. I don't know. The interrogation of Michael Crow was highly coercive and confrontational. Just tell us what happened. You keep asking me questions I can't answer. What do you want me to do? Michael Crow is 14 years old, and he's recently learned that his sister, who he loves dearly, is dead. I haven't liked you. He's told them repeatedly he didn't do this. They keep accusing him. They've been in this room with him for many hours. Well, like to the detective tells Crow he has a choice of two paths. If he doesn't confess, he'll be punished in an adult prison. If he does confess, he will get help. This is a lie. There's two paths to travel. There's the path of punishment, or there's the path that says, hey, I'm sorry for what I did. There's the path toward rehabilitation. If he makes the confession they're looking for that he killed his sister. Because we need to go down a path where we're going to help you work this problem out. And okay. his repentance will mean that he's not criminally charged or uh, punished. If he doesn't, then he will go to a hardcore juvenile prison. This two paths lie is an attempt to force Crow into confessing to the murder of his sister. Lies used in this highly coercive manner increase the risk of a suspect making a false confession. Another common tactic used in coercive interrogations is a sustained attack on a suspect's memory. I don't remember what I did. I'm trying to tell you. You say I did it? He's trying to tell them he has no memory, but they've beaten him down. He's crying. They're accusing him of selective memory. I don't know. And they're just coming back at him relentlessly. I can't remember means I can't remember. I can't remember selectively is a little bit different. And here they're trying to explain to him how he could have done this in the absence of having any memory, because he keeps saying, I didn't do it. I don't have any memory of this. I think there's two parts to Michael. There's a good Michael and there's a bad Michael. And the good Michael would never hurt or kill his sister. The bad Michael did it out of conscious awareness. You're right, it's unconscious. But if I'm the good Michael right now, then the other is completely well, submerged. I let's... can't remember. What's really going on, though, here is that this is nothing short of child abuse. <laughs> and he's having a breakdown. He's crying. He is psychologically tortured. <laughs> This is a painful scene to watch. This is an egregious um, interrogation, absolutely awful interrogation. The detective's highly coercive methods used during a 10-hour interrogation finally wear Crow down. He confesses to a crime he didn't commit. Wait, can I? Wait, can I? Fortunately for Michael Crow, evidence was found that exonerated him for the murder of his sister.